I hope you had a lovely holiday. I definitely did. Derek's favorite thing was Thanksgiving and the turkey, and David's favorite thing was sleeping in. Connor now has a room of his own, which is always lovely. I, I really hope you had a lovely holiday. Um, sometimes it's nice to just slow down, um, to not have lots of things on the schedule that you can work, but you don't have to get interrupted. You can just be. Um, I know I enjoyed that. I was super productive and I am kind of sad that fall is over, but almost also not sad that fall is over. This is what we're doing today. I want to discuss your final reflective essay. Um, confirm the title for the book because I have, I forgot. And then I want to discuss the book module and um, yeah, we're just wrapping things up and I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to read your work. I saw you all had really good research um, and I'm excited to see what you're doing with it. I've read a few papers and I like what you have. So there are no synchronous classes on Wednesday. And the reason for that is I wanna give you time to write and to get feedback. I know that for me personally, when I write, I just need time to write. I need time to write. I need time to think. Uh, if I have lots and lots of meetings, I don't get my writing. Um, it, it, my, my schedule, if my schedule's crazy, I can't focus. I need time to focus when I'm a writer. And I want to give you that time to focus. You can make an appointment to meet with me on Wednesday. Um, I will have appointments all the way from 11 until two o'clock. Um, they're 15 minute appointments. I don't care if I've already met with you. Uh, fill up the appointments. Um, for at least today, the 11 to 12 o'clock, will just be open to students in our class and the one to two o'clock will just be open to the students in my other class. Sometime tomorrow, I'll clear that out because I would rather meet with students than not meet with students. You can also make appointments to go to the writing center. You get extra credit for going to the writing center and you can also ask your group questions about the feedback they gave you. You may see a comment that they made and you might want clarification on that. Communicate with each other. You are there to support each other. Your paper is due on Saturday. I will accept it through Saturday, December 12th. Um, no penalty. I'm happy to take it. I want you to feel like you did a good job on your paper. That being said, I want to have this book all put together. And I'd really love to include some of your work in our book. I think that that would be valuable to balance these things out, um, to balance out you know, like what is literacy and how do we learn about literacy and how does identity feed into that. And of course, that's woven into your personal literacy narratives. But it's also woven into your research projects. And um, so think about that. I think I can edit the paper late. Um, you know, like once it's done, I think I can still edit it. Um, I'll know more about that on Wednesday. So um, questions about anything? Yes, I am that one. OK. Wait, oh, sorry. Uh, I remember when we were submitting it, we had to use images that were like copyright free, right? 
So here's things that I'm learning about copyright. Anything that we use, it needs to be copyright free. Mm -hmm. And it, if we use pictures of people, we actually have to get permissions from those people okay. that they're saying, yeah, I agree to have my, my face in your book. So um, I, I would like to include images, but they, you have to, like if you get them from Flickr or from Unsplash, who, show me who we, we need to give credit to. If it's your original photo, that's awesome too. So they they have to be copyright free. Yeah. Will there be like a submission for like our essays after we like remove the pictures? Because I know I have three or so pictures in mine that aren't from Flickr and Splash. I can take anything out and okay. I will do okay. that, Tuan. Um, the, the other thing is some of you may want to tweak a few things in your personal narrative after you're done with your research paper. And that's also fine. I'm gonna start putting the book together this week, um, but I've got some other things that I've got to do. Let me show you. Um, a couple of things, let me stop share. And oh, that's not what I wanted. New share, share screen. This is our, um, our page. And if you go to modules, the very last module, it'll, I'm still putting it together. It's me getting focused on what we need. So I want your bio, you're like, this is Mari's bio. I liked it because it was short and to the point. And so submit your bio. If you just copy paste what you had before, submit it here. This is where I'm going to insert it. Well, here's what I liked about what Mari did. Um, she has her name. She has her gender pronouns. Um, she has her level. And then she has SDSU. She has where she's from. Um, she has her major. And she has something about who she is. And then she has a little bit about why she wrote this. That's, I liked this format a lot. If you prefer to put yours in first person, that's fine, but keep it short to the point. It can be a little bit more conversational, um, but this is pretty much it. Questions about the bio? Notice you're getting points for the bio. I have a few extra points to give away and, um, I was like, let me give it for work. You've already done or work that's easy. Um, the other thing, um, is I need to get permission to use your essay in the book. And I'm going to be putting in, um, a Google form and it's going to be you, um, filling it out and saying, yes, I have permission to use the essay. Um, yes, that's, actually, I, I think I'm gonna use an Adobe sign form and you can choose, do I have permission to use just your personal narrative or um, your personal narrative and your research paper? Um, yes. And some of you may say, I want my I want my paper in here, but I don't want my name next to it. That's also fine. Here's some extra credit for you because as I'm putting this together and it will be available to, it's gonna be an open education resource that people can use. I thought, let's add some other information that makes this um, come alive. So it's your chance to give advice to students about being a first year or being a first year or on online or to 
create a reflection of this is what I thought college would be. This is what it was. Reflect on your experience. Give advice about working in groups. Um, discuss what it means to be a writing center tutor. I mean, this is quick stuff that just goes in little sidebars. Um, uh, we'll choose some of those to include in the book. You can complete this uh, twice, five points extra credit for each one. You don't have to respond to anybody, but I set it up as a discussion board post. So you could say, oh yeah, that was really good um, or great idea. And then you write something similar, but different. Okay, questions about that? Extra credit, five points. Don't spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to have an introduction here once we get our title done. Uh, questions about any of that? Okay. Let me get back to, I totally can't remember what title we chose. Does any, do any of you remember the title we chose? I think it was the sixth one. Oh, good, because that really is my favorite. Okay, um, thank you, Tuan. Um, let me just, does anybody have any other memory? There were two that I really liked. I liked five and six, my favorites, but I totally couldn't remember. So let me, I like this so I never forget again. Yeah, it was number six. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, let me go back to... Okay. I do want to talk about this week. Obviously, we don't have class on Wednesday. Just focus time, writing time, feedback time. Um, where is, dang, I am so confused. I, th that is a problem. Let me get out of um, leave student view. Sorry, I, I see you can't see week 15. And okay. And I was sure I made that available. But I didn't. Okay, so the, this is the first time you're seeing this. Welcome to week 15. Um, there's not a lot going on this week because you're just finishing an essay. Um, so you're here, yay. Um, I want to talk about the prompt for the final essay and ask questions about anything that isn't clear, make an appointment to meet with me. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is that prompt. And I've been talking about it all semester long. And um, I have set it up, your project, what it is you're doing, and then hints for streamlining your discussion, questions about the project, and then there's a printable prompt. It was gonna be worth 200 points. It's now worth 100 points. And we're actually gonna end up with um, the class being worth about 1,015 a, a points. Those 15 points are just extra. Um, I still base this off of 1,000. This is your project. Um, we've talked a lot about raising our voices and persuasion. And you've been looking at those types of things. Um, you're like, how do you use ethos, pathos, logos? How do you create an identity? How do you use rhetorical strategies? How do you write in a way that helps people pay attention? And so your project for this 
you've also been practicing a lot of rhetorical analysis. Um, I haven't graded you on that. I've given you feedback on it, but you haven't gotten grades. Well, you've gotten points because um, I've always given you the full points. This time it comes down to grading. You're creating a reflective essay on persuasion by identifying, describing, and analyzing the persuasiveness of specific things other writers have done, and by reflecting on how you've employed those strategies in your own writing this semester, as well as how you've grown as a writer by studying these things. So you're gonna have an introduction that introduces and defines rhetoric and argumentation, as well as the value of learning the art of persuasion. You might find it useful to reference some of our readings, which define these topics, like E. Shelley Reed, she defines writing rhetorically. Um, some of our other writers, I know Rebecca Jones talks about these things. You get to see how you wanna focus this. Um, you're gonna reflect on your own growth as a writer over the course of the semester and how you've learned to consider to actually think about these things. You don't need to set this up as, oh, I've learned everything because reflective writing allows you to reflect on your need to know things or like you're not understanding. Um, all of that matters. Um, you'll need a project statement as well as a thesis to guide your audience. And you'll need a paragraph about the importance of appealing to a specific audience. Actually, these aren't necessarily distinct paragraphs. You definitely can arrange them that way, but you have options. But I do want you to address the importance of appealing to a specific audience. Um, and why that matters. I want you to address ethos. Um, you need to define ethos and analyze why it's important. Um, you need to discuss Aristotle's five ways to build ethos. If you don't remember those, they're at the bottom of the page. Um, you're going to need to introduce an article and analyze how an author builds ethos by employing at least three of the five things that Aristotle claims build ethos. Um, anytime you introduce a new text, you need to provide some information about that text. And you're also going to introduce an essay you wrote for this class or another class and analyze how you employed at least three of the five things to build ethos for your primary audience. You're gonna do the a same thing with pathos. Um, this time though, it's not five things, it's a rhetorical strategy that you used. Note that pathos and a rhetorical strategy are not the same thing. You use a rhetorical strategy like a narrative or identification or compare and contrast or cause and effect or exemplification in order to evoke emotions. Um, again, you're gonna give an example of a rhetorical strategy in a text you read and how the uh, author uses a strategy to evoke emotions in an audience. But you're also going to analyze what you did in an essay. Same thing with logos, a rhetorical strategy that demonstrated logos from something you read and something you wrote. Um, your conclusion is you're just trying it together, emphasizing what you've learned, how you may use it in the future, and how you plan to further develop your persuasive abilities in the future, whether in writing and speaking or in advocating for issues you care about. Questions about this. So, here are a few hints for streamlining your discussion. If you used three different texts, you would have to introduce three different texts. Um, 
And you could uh, talk about one text. That would be a possibility. And then you only have to address it once. You could uh, also only analyze one essay you've written instead of multiple essays. Um, you could analyze a single rhetorical strategy that illustrates the use of ethos, pathos, and logos. And yes, a rhetorical strategy can employ all three appeals simultaneously. Um, for example, you could analyze the use of a narrative in a text or the role of exigency in a text um, that's doing all of these things. Um, I created a really straightforward organizational pattern. Um, yeah, introduction, a body paragraph about audience, a body par two body paragraphs about ethos, two about pathos, two about logos. But um, you can streamline it and make this much shorter. Um, just keep your audience in mind. Questions about that? So it's completely valid to swap the order of the um, pathos, egos, logos. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, as long as as long as you've written it in a way that you know, like you're guiding an audience and helping them follow you, I think that that's perfectly legitimate. Um, I think that that's valuable. I wrote them in the order I thought about them. I always think audience is the most important thing. And I always think ethos is the next important thing, but that's my logic. It's not necessarily everybody else's logic. And you have to be able to follow your own logic. I also, um, did that answer the question, um, Derek? Yeah, I did. Okay. So as I wrote the prompt, I started thinking about things that you might ask. And so those are all here. Um, when is it due and how many points is it worth? It is due on December 9 and it's worth 100 points. Woo. Um, can you use first person? Yes. Who is your audience? Um, well, it can be students. It can be me. It can be you. Um, but ultimately, um, that's, you know, like how you imagine it in your head is going to change the way you write. And um, it could make, you know, like how you imagine your audience in your head could make it easier for you to write. And so you choose. Um, you choose. But keep in mind that I am looking for some very specific things. I'm still finishing up the, um, the rubric and it should be up there tomorrow morning. Um, what kind of tone should you adopt? Well, that depends on your audience. I, some of you are really comfortable with a, um, a formal tone, an academic tone. And some of you would rather have a more conversational tone. Doesn't matter to me. You use the tone that you're most comfortable with. Um, either way, I'm grading on in-depth analysis. Showing and not just telling, not assuming you're writing to a mind reader, you know, like pink house guidance, balancing fruit and jello, that kind of thing. Very E. Shelley Reed. And that, you know, like those E. Shelley Reed principles are key no matter whether, you know, like whether you are writing academically or you're writing more personally. So, can you use some of the analyses that you wrote previously? Well, yes. Um, you probably are going to have to add a few things and revise, but you can definitely expand on what you've already written. Um, you can even refer back to your essay reflections because you did some rhetorical analysis of your own essays. So you have a little bit of practice on that and I gave you feedback on that. Um, again, you're probably going to have to expand on what you've already done, but at least you know where to expand. Do you need a work cited page? Yes. Include any articles you reference, whether or for rhetorical analysis or just support your discussion, but you do not need to include your own essays in the work cited page. How long should this be? Heck if I know. Um, 
a lot depends on how you organize it and how many different articles you analyze. Um, I can't imagine that this would be more than three pages. Or yeah, I think it's probably going to be around three pages. What I can say is you need to be thorough um, and in depth answering how and why questions. How might the primary audience respond? Why, why does it, what does it make them think and remember? How does this tap into their pre-existing beliefs? How does this make the audience more likely to see the world the way the author wants to see them? And on and on and on. I also expect you to guide your audience from idea to idea. So any questions that I didn't address in this? Okay, I tried to be thorough. Um, maybe not as thorough as I need. You have a lot of flexibility in the way you write this. And sometimes flexibility can be frustrating because then you really have to puzzle it out. Um, uh, thanks Tuan for letting me know. Um, Sometimes flexibility can be frustrating because then you have to figure out the organization. But sometimes it can be liberating because you really get to make it make sense in the way it makes sense in your own head. And I want it to make sense in for you. Um, just make it so I can follow you. So Sorry to interrupt, but you would say that there's a certain amount of uh, interpretation that we have over what you've put up for the guideline, like follow yeah. the general guideline of including different, um, those different topics, but we can slightly modify it so that it fits the flow of our essay. Yeah. Okay. And I would rather have that because remember, you are also reflecting on your own growth as a writer. And so, um, that's part of this. Uh, I told you early in the semester that reflection is about internalizing what you learn. Because think of all the classes you've ever taken. And sometimes you remember nothing when you walk away from them. And sadly, that's just how education is. But if you think about what you're learning and you put it in your own words and you analyze it, um, you're more likely to remember the things that you reflected on. And so I always include that. And you'll be doing that same thing um, for the essay that you're submitting in on Saturday or, you know, like whenever you submit it. Yeah. Final questions before I say see you next Monday or Wednesday, if you have a an appointment to meet with me. All right, then you are dismissed. I'll stick around as long as there are people here. Have a great rest.